this is going to be a walkthrough of the assignment on reverb and compression, basic routing and understanding of plugins, sidechain inputs to compressors, pre-fader and post-fader bus sends on channels in Pro Tools. If you don't have the assignment up, grab a screenshot right here. Make sure you have the assignment. And here's the rubric. All of this can be found here in Canvas as well. First thing you'll want to do is have Pro Tools ready to go. Um, and we're going to create a new session. Your uh, program might pop up this dialog as it loaded. And one thing to double check every single session is your bit depth and your sample rate. Um, file type, basically you're going to have those options, WAVE or AIFF. Um, but 24-bit, I would highly recommend, and 44.1 or 48. In this case, the assignment asks for 44.1, so do that. Uh, and then I.O. settings, because we're working remotely here, they're going to be different for different people, depending on your interface or if you don't have an interface, etc. Um, for me, I'm running three different uh, interfaces that are all sort of conjoined um, digitally, and so my I.O. looks very different than um, what you might find on a laptop setup or a single interface system. Saving location here, uh, be organized. If you're working for class, make sure that every class has its own folder and every one of your Pro Tools assignments is saved clearly in that folder. For me, I like to do um, by the program. So I have a Pro Tools folder and in there I have projects. I have a logic folder and in there I have artists and clients and all of their sessions that are in Logic, and then I have an Ableton folder, and in there I have those artists and projects and all of the um, you know, material af as associated with those. Some people would have the artist first and then projects for that artist or that client, regardless of the program. In my head, it just makes more sense to have the programs um, as the highest level. So whatever works for you, just always be organized. That's the most important thing, according to Chris Lord Algae, about being a good mixing engineer. Um, next up, oh, at any time, you, I'm moving too fast. Stop the video and rewatch the stuff that I'm mentioning. Uh, make sure that you're saving things correctly, things are titled correctly, things are um, set up correctly all the way through. Let's name the assignment. In this case, the instructor's initials, followed by the section number, then your last name, not my last name, and your first name, and then the name of the uh, assignment. And I apologize if you're hearing a little bit of radio come through. The way I've got this set up to do this recording and streaming, for some reason, is picking up some sort of radio station in the background. Boom, we're saved, and that's going to create a session folder as well as a session file in that session folder called that. Now that we've got this rolling, we have a blank Pro Tools session. Of course, you remember the keyboard shortcut Command equal sign to switch between your mixer window and your edit window. Um, and in this assignment, well, I'll walk through the whole thing, but I'm going to also set up uh, something a little different. Um, adding a new track, the keyboard shortcut is Shift Command N. And I'm going to set up a mono auxiliary channel for my talkback mic. Um, this you do not need to do, but I'm just going to do it real quick um, so I can switch off of the RME Fireface, something that's also pretty cool. But this is one of those digital mixers I'm talking about that's running in the background. This is the direct audio input, so you'll hear my audio quality change here in a second. Always label your tracks. Um, I have this uh, console one plugin that I very much enjoy, um, and I have a setup here that will hopefully make me sound a little better once I set up my inputs correctly and uh, nice and a little more loud. Might have heard some popping there. Um, 
but now I'm coming through uh, some compression and an EQ and a, there's a gate and it's very fancy. All right, so ignore that for the rest of it. Actually, I can hide it. Maybe. It's not letting me hide it. All right. Okay, so now we're good to go. We're going we're gonna to keep working here right through the assignment. We'll add an audio track. Um, we can at this time, so once again, shift command N, shift command down will set up another track here and command to the right will change the type of track. You can see that going stereo to mono. Command up and down will change the, I don't know, I guess it's the type. This is like the format and this is the type. Yeah, format of the track and the type of the track. So we're gonna have a master fader in stereo. Always good idea to have a master fader. Always a better idea to make sure things are labeled clearly. Um, that's so important. So in this case, I'm just gonna call this Vox Recording. And an important point is to make sure that your inputs and outputs are correct for your system. This might take a couple hours. It took me several hours to make sure I could get this all set up to do streaming and stuff. Um, in my case, that's a software um, return, which is an ADAT output. So that's what I'm using. Um, there are a lot more outputs around, but anyway. So uh, we have vocal recording and we are going to record three short five second clips of audio spaced about five seconds apart. Obviously, I can move these as well. So bring that on. Hold on, I forgot to actually set up this. I'm on ADAT input two, because uh, that's how far my patch cable stretches that I grabbed this morning. And um, you can see I have audio. So this audio is actually different from the audio you're hearing, even though they're the same input because it doesn't have that uh, effect on it, that, that uh, console one plugin, which is providing all of those gating and EQ and stuff. We're ready to go on this track. We're gonna record some audio about five seconds long. I'm watching my meter up here. Boom. Recording audio. All right, go about five seconds later. Pew, pew. Right here, 10 seconds, that's fine. It doesn't matter, you can move these when you're done. I'll do that on the last one. Hey, 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 oh. And if we just keep recording right here. Side chain compression and reverb. Side chain. And grab this last one. You can switch between your editing tools up here with command one through seven. You can see those switching right there. Um, you can see there's only six, but if you hit command seven, it goes to the smart tool, which has a s selection tool when you're on the top half of a clip, a grabber tool when you're on the bottom, oops, grabber tool when you're on the bottom half of a clip, and a uh, trimmer tool when you go near the beginning or the end. And if you zoom in, which uh, keyboard shortcut you should remember is command brackets, in the upper corners, you'll get fade um, para control. Um, so there you go. So you can set this up so they're nice and clean and you definitely won't hear little pops and clicks in our recording. Um, if you want, boom. Doop, 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 doop. That one got weird. All right, there we go, and I'm going to bring this guy in and give it just a little fade. Now, you can also do that with Command-F to add fades, um, and cool, and then zoom back out with our bracket signs. If we go right here, we're at 26, so that's further than I want to be. This one will start sort of near zero. This one will start sort of near 10, and then that's about five seconds long, so we'll go to 15, and this one should go to like 20-ish. Boom. All right. Now, on the assignment, it says import a musical selection and have this on another track. Okay. You should remember that keyboard shortcut, Shift-Command-I. Otherwise, you can go to File, Import Audio, and uh, go find something that you can utilize here. Um, this is a bunch of things. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's grab this let's see what this sounds like eh. I mean
mean, this gets kind of cool. But we're not going to use that. We're going to use... Let's see what's going on here. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll use this one. Cool. That should work. All right. So we've, we're going to import that. Oh, I should have mentioned on the import page. I'll do it again. On the import page here, you want to hit copy, not add. Copy is going to move that file over into your session folders folder called audio files. And that is what you want. If you click add, sometimes this will say convert also. Uh, if they are different um, formats, if it's say 16-bit and your session's in 24-bit, um, in this case, they're both 24-bit. Um, so when you say copy, it moves it to that internal folder of your session folder. When you say add, it leaves it in its original location. Totally will work on your machine. Totally will not work when you send it to someone else unless you consolidate all those files before you send it. So copy. We'll put it into the folder. Then you hit done, and you can see that. Here's my assignment. This is the session folder. Inside of the session folder are all of these other assets and folders. And inside audio, we will have that. And you can see our three Vox recordings, one, two, and three. Boom. All right. We add that on there, and we're going to add it to a new track. Session start, and there's our little track. Um, if I wanted to maybe modify some things like take off this little intro so when it hits that drum part I could change my mode using option one to shuffle mode which will shuffle it to the left as I edit the front so now that's gonna snap over to the left boom and then if I take um, I'm gonna switch back to my smart tool and I'm gonna just put a little bit of a fade at the beginning there and then make sure we have playback. And you can see I'm talking there, but you didn't really hear it because I have the fader down quite low. Um, recording. But you can hear. It's a little difficult to hear that audio above this. Recording. Audio. Right? So, hey, 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 hey. so what we're going to do is set up a side chain compressor. So we go to the musical track, select an insert, multi uh, channel is fine, and then we go to a dyne. Three. This is a standard uh, compressor limiter in Pro Tools for a long, long time. Um, within this compressor, you have the general parameters of any compressor. Um, some of some compressors, this is available to you. Some it's not, uh, but they're all there if that makes sense. Um, so some compressors don't have a control for a knee function, but there is a knee, and it's this slope. Uh, right here at the threshold point. Anyway, in order to set this guy up, uh, let me look at the assignment real quick. Uh, we're going to go to a 10 to 1 ratio. Uh, we're going to have a attack time of 1 millisecond. Be careful because this Pro Tools compressor has nanosecond crazy stuff, which is just nuts. Um, Generally, a very fast attack is two or three milliseconds. So I'm going to go to 1.2, that's fine, milliseconds. A 200 release. You can also just click and type in the number if you want to be very accurate. And then you'll notice I just say an appropriate threshold. And that's because your audio might not be recorded with an optimal level, or it might be recorded hotter or not as hot. All right, so setting up, so that's just basic compression. So now if I hit play, you can see our compressors just smashing our music. Here's our input levels, which are very hot, and our output levels. That's not what we're looking for. What we're looking for 
is when the vocals are being played back, the musical track is being compressed. So when the green, these transient things I recorded, are played back, the level of the purple gets reduced. This is a very, very common use of dynamic processors. Um, you can hear it on the radio all the time uh, when someone calls in and a host speaks and then it knocks down the phone, the person who's calling in, you hear their level come down. That's not an engineer doing that. That's a side-chained compressor on the input from the phone line. Um, if you watch some Jerry Springer, you can always hear him above like 16 people fighting and yelling and screaming. And then when he stops speaking, they all get louder. And that's because there's a side chain compressor across everyone's mix. So you can always hear the host. Um, and the host doesn't have to scream over everyone. So this is a very, very common technique. Um, and this is also very, very common in EDM music and uh, all sorts of music, uh, not just EDM, but it's overly used uh, in, in, the, in the sense that it has become a very clear aesthetic part of that music. Um, so that's what we're going to set up. So in Pro Tools, there's a side chain key here on the right side. Click the key. Now this compressor is looking at the side chain, but we don't have a side chain set up yet. So we need to figure that out. How are we going to get signal from our vocal track to our musical track compressor? Um, and the way we're going to do that, one way to do it, is to use a bus. So in this case, I'm going to add a bus. I'll use bus 1. And that will pop up a fader here. Uh, I'm going to turn that all the way up, and I'm going to set it to pre-fader. In this way, this send is completely separate from the channel fader. The send level is completely separate from this. If I have this off, it is now post fader, where af adjusting the channel fader will affect the level to this send. So essentially, it's where the source for the send is taken in the channel path. So I'm going to set it to pre-fader. Um, this way, even if I turn the vocals way down, they'll still affect and come into my compressor at the same level. And then I'm going to go here and set up the right here, the key input to be bus 1. Now, when I play back my audio, we should see this compressor showing the level of our vocals, not our music. So see that red dot showing the level going above the threshold? Now there's nothing, even though the music's playing. Now watch when this hits. Boom. And if you can hear, the music is pumping when those hit. Right? And if I bring the threshold even further down, it will get more drastic. And now I can bring up the vocals. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 oh. Music comes back up. Side chain compression and reverb. Side chain. So hopefully you can hear that nice and clearly. Hey, hey, hey. The music kind of pumping up and down when I do the hey, hey, hey. One more time just so you can see it. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Cool. So that's part one of this assignment. Part two is to add a couple um, auxiliary tracks. Uh, well, one more, aux one auxiliary track, sorry. Uh, and then we will add a couple sends on these two tracks. So once again, our keyboard shortcut in Pro Tools, Shift Command N brings this up, we're going to add a mono auxiliary track. I'm just holding down command and the down arrow to get from audio track 
to auxiliary track. Uh, and I'm going to leave it mono for the time being. Um, now, on my mixer window, we're going to add in that D-verb plugin that I mentioned in the assignment, um, mono to stereo. I don't really care what the settings are on this plugin for the time being. Um, doesn't really matter too much. Uh, so you can play with them, listen to it, make something cool, whatever. Uh, then on our two tracks here, we can select those two tracks holding down shift. Then if you hold down shift and option, you can apply output bus 5 as a send. And then on the aux track, which of course we will label, because we always label our tracks, um, we're going to set the input to be bus 5. Boom, bus 5, like that. So now, anything that is on this aux or this aux will go into this track if I uh, apply the level there. So let's, uh, let's see what that sounds like. I'm going to mute the music track. And then we'll select our bus 5 here, which is this fader, and play it back and see if we get reverb. Recording audio. Recording audio. I think it worked. That's great. So now I asked for a couple levels um, on these. So you'll set up a vocal track with a post fader send, which is not selected here. So this is post fader, pre post, pre post. And the music, oh, and then the level on that will be negative 20, which is pretty low, but just adds a little recording audio. It's a little, little room sound on there, a little space. Make it bigger. You'll be able to hear it better. Anyway, uh, and then on our music track, we will add even less, but I'm just looking for the process here. Negative 25. And we will set that up to be a pre-fader send. So this is a very different type of send because it will, it's irregardless of the level of the fader. Recording audio. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 oh. Side chain compression and reverb. Side chain. Okay, and so that's it. That's basically the setup of this. Once you double check that you can hear the reverb on both parts, you have your master fader, you're not clipping, create a bounce file where the side chaining and the reverb is obvious. So in this case, you might turn up the reverbs a little bit. Um, I just didn't want them oversaturated. Recording audio like that. Cool. Then select the time frame. See how I did that right there in the timeline that you would like to bounce. Please do not bounce out a five minute file if you don't need to. Um, you can even come in here and take the audio, strip it down like so, add in that fade, which um, you might remember I said was command F. Boom, like that. Uh, equal power fade is going to sound a little more natural. You can also do fun, fancy curves if you want. Play with that, listen to it, check it out. Side chain. Then it goes into the next section of the song. So what I'm going to do here is just take this, and that will be my bounced um, thing. We're going to bounce to disc. You can see the keyboard shortcut there. And... In this case, it will call it all of that. I like to also place bounce after that. Um, I can see the file path here. That's great. Boom, 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 boom. We don't want multiple mono. We want interleaved. Always check all of these settings. Uh, if we want to add an MP3 version, we can. That would be great since I do ask for that in the rubric. Um, and da, 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 da. We, I'm not going to add it to iTunes or any of that stuff. Um, and then I'll do this, bounce, version one. And always, I like to always check the folder, make sure it's correct. Pro Tools used to not add a bounce folder, so you had to build one yourself. And then we hit bounce, 
It's going to ask us about um, ID3 tagging here, which is very useful for MP3 information, especially for podcasts and sending this to people. Um, and not for this assignment, but cool. And then it bounces. Great. Save your session. You can close your session. Shift Command W will close the session. Command Q will close Pro Tools. You can see Pro Tools is still open. And if we go in here and we go to Music, Pro Tools, s this file for this class, we should see an MP3 as well. Oh, shit. And if you go through, I had to switch because I closed Pro Tools. So Shift Command W closes the session in Pro Tools. Shift Q will quit Pro Tools. I still have Pro Tools open technically and a lot of other stuff here. Um, you can see Pro Tools is right here. But uh, if you go through wherever you saved it, in my case, it's under Pro Tools, and you can see just for this class what I have in there. Um, bounced files, and I have my MP3 and my WAV file. I will take this entire session folder here, right-click on it, or uh, control-click if you haven't set up your mouse in System Preferences to have a right-click, and do Compress. It will compress that file, which should take about five seconds if you haven't made your bounce massive. And that is what you will upload for submission.